Hi, my name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on one bird species and learning about our reintroduction program here at the Living Coast. A reintroduction program is a program designed to help threatened or endangered species to produce offspring that will eventually get released back out into the wild to bring those native populations up to a healthy number. Now, here at the Living Coast, our reintroduction program is involved with the light-footed ridgeway rail. The light-footed ridgeway rail has been on the endangered species list since 1970 due to habitat loss. For a reintroduction program to be successful, many different organizations have to work together in order to bring these animals up to a great population number and then release them out into the wild. Well, it's so rewarding to release these birds uh, into the wild here. And what's important is this landscape across the channel here is a restored salt marsh here on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. It's about six years old now. and so. The vegetation is mature enough that we can support a, a light-footed ridgeways rail population on this res restoration area. So slowly, uh, we're, we're restoring the ecological function of South Bay, and the rails are a big part of that because they're almost lost from the bay. This program is something that we're all just thrilled to have been taking part in because we have the federal and state governments and we have NGOs, so non-governmental organizations like the Living Coast Discovery Center and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park and SeaWorld of San Diego and, and private ornithologists, especially Dr. Richard Zemble with the Santa Ana Wetland Conservancy, uh, Huntington Beach, excuse me, the Huntington Beach Wetlands Conservancy and lots of volunteers who have gathered around this program and we've all uh, contributed our, our mm -hmm. bits and I don't think any of us could do it by ourselves so the teamwork is, is crucial it's a, it takes a village to raise a rail well, we We've learned a little bit about Team Rail in the reintroduction program, let's learn about the actual bird that this program focuses on. The light-footed Ridgeway Rail is a small bird, more medium size, uh, that is actually about 14 inches in length. So it's not super big, but it's not super small either. It's actually very comparable to the size of a hen. Now this bird is adapted to life in the marsh, which you can see all around behind me. The marsh habitat has some really important things to it, but can make life a little difficult for some of these birds to be able to survive. Some adaptations that this bird has to help it survive life in the marsh includes having a long curled beak, so that way it can probe into the sand and into the shallow waters to get things like invertebrates such as crabs or snails, crayfish even if they're in a freshwater marsh, and many different types of animals and different organisms that are going to be found out in the marsh for them to eat. Another adaptation that this bird has is going to have long toes and slender legs. These skinny legs with longer toes help them to be able to wade through the muddy shorelines without getting stuck in the mud. So if I were to walk out of the water, I would actually sink into the mud because my body weight would pull me down. Having these long toes and these slender legs help the rails to be able to walk across those muddy shorelines without getting sucked in. Now another adaptation, probably the most important adaptation that helps these birds to survive is actually going to be their color pattern or their camouflage. The light-footed Ridgeway rail is actually going to be a brownish gray pattern with a cinnamon colored or auburn color on their chest. This brownish gray pattern actually helps them to camouflage and blend in with all the plant life around them. So even though I'm standing here, there could be a rail behind us right now and we wouldn't be able to see it. In fact, these rails are so well camouflaged that our partnerships, whenever they're out there tracking them in the wild, scientists are having a really hard time being able to track them. So we actually use a backpack mechanism or a GPS that's going to be attached to the birds that re we reintroduce out into the wild. So a satellite telemetry backpack is how we're able to track the movements of these birds to see where they're going and what's going on so that we can make sure that these birds that are being reintroduced into the wild are living life to the best possibilities. Now these satellite telemetry backpacks are really important for us to get Im information on what these birds do and if they're migrating. Historically, rails would actually migrate from different marshes across Southern California, including all the way out to Salton Sea. Now, due to the degradation and destruction of some of these marshes, we haven't seen that type of migration pattern with these rails. 
But using these satellite telemetry backpacks, we can actually get some information to see if these birds are starting to return to their native and natural environment. Unfortunately, in California, 90% of the historical marshland habitat has actually been destroyed or degraded. But U.S. Fish and Wildlife and many other partnerships and organizations are working together to combat this issue to bring back our healthy marsh habitats to help support these birds out in the wild. Now let's get a chance to meet with one of our animal care specialists who's going to fill us in with a little bit more information about this program and how it works. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey and I'm one of the animal care specialists here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. You guys might be wondering, um, where exactly are we at the Living Coast? Well, we are actually here today in our proving pens. Uh, which is a very important part of one of the things, many things that we do here at the Living Coast Discovery Center, but we are actually part of a species survival program. So this might be a place that you guys at home aren't too familiar with, but we really want to give you kind of a behind the scenes look at exactly what it means to be a part of a species survival program. So first off, you might be asking yourself, well, what exactly is a species survival program? Now, a species survival program, or as we in the zoological community like to refer to it, is um, as an SSP, is something that is um, to be a part of is a really, really huge honor um, and a big privilege, especially as an animal care specialist um, like myself. Uh, we are part of two species survival programs here at the Living Coast. Um, one is our burrowing owl program that you guys might get an opportunity to learn a little bit more about later on. But the one that we're going to be talking about today is our light-footed rail program, um, breeding program. So here in our proving pens, this is a really important part of what we do. You might be seeing this little guy right here behind me. This is one of our little hide nests that we make for our rails um, when we are in the process of reintroducing them back into the wild. So a little bit about what we do here at the Living Coast Discovery Center is we have a partnership with um, San Diego Zoo Global um, and SeaWorld to basically breed for release. So essentially what that means is, is we have pairs of rails who are living here full time at the Living Coast that we care for. Um, and we hope that every year they make really, really cute little babies. And then our job is to essentially take care of those babies, raise them up in a safe environment away from predators with the hopes of then reintrodu reintroducing them back into the wild. So step one, is we set the scene for male and female rail to breed. Then we continue to take care of their offspring. Once their offspring reaches an appropriate age, um, the same age that mom and dad would get rid of them in the wild, they come into these proving pens. And why we call them proving is, is that they're quote unquote, proving themselves for release back into the wild. So this is the area where they will come. Um, as you can see, there's vegetation here. There's a running stream of water. So we're trying our best to mimic what they would be encountering out in the wild. So they actually have the opportunity here to hunt for their own fish, um, to be amongst the pickleweed and cord grass that they would be a part of out in the wild. Um, and essentially, we keep them here for a period of time. Um, once they are kind of eating on their own, we see them hunting fish, they're eating off the ground, that is when we then deem them ready for release. Um, and once we, once we get to that point, we will actually come in here, we will catch up all of our rails, give them a thorough medical check. What this means is we will weigh them, we'll look at their feet, we'll look at their eyes, their beaks, anything like that, make sure they are indeed fit for release. And then we will go and take them into one of a few sites that we deem where is a suitable ha habitat for rails, and we will release them back into the wild. Now this year was really, really cool for us here at the Living Coast because we actually got to be a part of a really unique research program. Um, we actually par partnered with the University of Idaho and we actually put uh, little backpack transmitters on our rails. They were solar powered, which is pretty cool. Um, and that allowed us actually to take data from them once we released them back into the wild. So we actually got to kind of like quote unquote check up on them once they were off um, our premises. So definitely being part of an SSP or species survival program is a really, really huge honor. And for me, myself um, here at the Living Coast, it's one of the things I enjoy most being a part of. 
Um, obviously, all of us keepers here are super passionate about conservation, education, and to get to be a part of breeding animals under human care and then seeing them go back to the wild is a huge, huge honor. It's something that I hope that you guys get to learn a little bit more about and you've enjoyed seeing our proving pens here today and we hope to see you guys again very soon. Although the light-footed ridgeway rail is listed as an endangered species, there are some things that you can do to help out. There are many different ways to help all kinds of different animals out here in our natural environment and one of the simplest ways to do so is just pick up trash. Making sure that your trash ends up in the correct bin, whether it's trash or recycling, can help all kinds of different animals. But specifically to help rails, there are some things that you can do that are going to have a little bit more of an impact to help their survival. Rails are very, very reliant on the specific type of plants that grow in a marsh ecosystem. So if the marsh habitats get different plants in them, it makes it hard for them to be able to build their nests. So what you can do is actually make sure that in your backyard or your front yard, you only have native plant species in your yard. So you want to check them and remove any of those non-native plants as they might actually be invasive. As those seeds actually come out into the wind or into the waterways through the rivers or our watersheds, they actually will bring their way down into the marsh habitat. The marsh habitat here is actually going to be the last stop of that watershed. So anything, even if it's all the way up there in the mountains, will actually work its way down here into San Diego Bay or another portion along the Pacific Ocean, depending on where you're at. Now, removing these non-natives or invasive plants will stop them from being able to grow in our marsh habitat and allow the native plants to be able to survive. Now, another way that you can actually help out, if you don't have a yard or maybe you know you have native plants in your backyard already, you can actually help and volunteer in one of our habitat restoration projects. There are many different habitat restoration projects going around all over in San Diego, so you could actually participate in one of those as well. Now, I hope you've had a great time learning about our rails and our reintroduction program here at the Living Coast Discovery Center with U.S. Fish and Wildlife.